In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you how you can customize your color boards. I'm going to click on the icon in the upper left corner, my media room. I happen to already be there, but if you're not, that's where you find it. And you can click on your F3 key. Once you're there, you have media content. Click on the down arrow, and the second option is color boards. I'll click there. Now, when we start with PowerDirector, we often think, well, I have to find one of these that works for me and drag it to the track. And what we'll often do is something like this. I'll, I'll take this and drag it down and drag it into the track. And it fills the, the screen nicely with the color. And I can put text or pictures or something in front of it. Let me show you more that you, than you can do than that. Uh, first of all, I'm going to double click on my color board. That will put me into the PIP designer. And now I have lots of things I can do with a color board. Commonly, we often try to say, well, I'll make it smaller or bigger by dragging the corner. And then I can drag anywhere inside to move it around. But you also can do uh, the option over here on scale to turn off maintain aspect ratio. That allows you to make it narrow or tall. It can be a square or a rectangle any size you want, any location you want. Unfortunately, you can't turn it into an ellipse or a polygon or something else, but you can take the color board and uh, make some adjustments in it so long as it's uh, square. The other thing you can do with it is apply some of the other items that we have in our PIP designer. I can change the opacity of it, make it almost transparent. I can change the rotation of the color board if I don't want it perfectly square horizontally or vertically. I won't do that right now. Um, I can change the shadow of the color board. I'll turn the shadow option on. It defaults to black, which I can't see here. So I'll, I'll turn it to a pink and turn it, click on OK. And there's my shadow. I can control the distance of the shadow. And I also can control the blur of the shadow and I can control the opacity as well, just of the shadow itself, and the direction of the shadow as well. So that gives me some options there. The other thing I can do is I can add a reflection if I want, and then to do that, it would have to be up higher to see it. There's my reflection. Um, I can also change the border. So let's take a border. I've got a white border on it default. Again, I can make it bigger. Let's do that so we can see some differences. I'm going to turn a uniform color and choose a two color gradient. Let's say inside we're going to start with a black and then click OK. And then outside we're going to start, use a gray color. And now I have what looks like a metallic border around. And I can, I can take off the, sh the pink shadow if I don't think that really helps me a lot in this particular case. Or I can do maybe a different color that would be just enough to augment it. Let's do, um, let's do a little bit of a, uh, uh, just an off-white here. Click OK. And uh, then we'll make the shadow a little smaller. Uh, I need enough to see the, the, just enough to see the bottom. But there's an example of how you can make a pretty easy metallic looking border um, around um, your color board. And uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, um, you can fade it in and out as well. If I click on fade and click on enable fade in, it will set some keyframes and I can adjust these and do whatever I want in terms of opacity. I'm going to turn that off. So I'll click on OK there. So now I have this nice looking border that I can use. Another thing that you can do with uh, PowerDirector is you can actually create a new set of new color for your color board. Let's try that next. I'm going to move my scrubber over here a little bit. And now I don't like any of these colors. I want something different. So I click next to color board uh, the rectangle with a plus in the lower right corner. And I turn that on. I do from color selector. I click that, and now this gives me the option of any of my basic colors. Or I can take one of these and I can tweak it any way I want. 
Maybe I want this really, really dark purple here. Notice it says 870174. That's my red, green, and blue values. When I click OK, it inserts it and it assigns it the number 870174. If I right click on this, I can rename this to something else. I can call this, for example, um, new purple. And now I have a color. It looks like it disappeared, but the alphabetical ones come up at the bottom. If I want to remove it, I right click on it and say remove from library and it's gone. Another way you can create it is to create a color that matches something on an image or in a video clip. So first, if I'm going to do that, I need to have an image or video clip somewhere in my timeline. So I'm going to go back here to my media. I'll take the Studio Americana neon sign. It doesn't matter where I put it. I'll just put it here for now. And now it's on the timeline and now it's in the preview window. I need those things to be true to do what I'm about to do. I click back to color boards. I click back to my create a new one. And now I have a from preview option available. I'll click on that. It will give me a select from color preview. And I, I, it starts at the beginning of your timeline. So I need to move, uh, move this to where I have the image or section of the video I want. And I can use the fr go frame by frame or use the slider any way I want. So let's assume in this case, uh, I want to create a color that will match maybe this blue here. So all I do is put the eyedropper on top of the color I want. And then I go, then I simply click it and it sets it here. Now this is where you have to be careful because it doesn't tell me a RGB value. So it might be pretty, pretty close to something I already have, but I'll click on OK. And I saw it pop in over here. Now immediately I'm going to rename this. I'll call this Americana because I know what I want to apply it to. It then inserts the color down here. So now I have a, uh, a color board. Let me take my uh, image and drag it down to track two. And I'll take my Americana color board, drag it to track one. I'll go back to track two where my image is. And I'll use my pip designer to resize it. But I've got a matching color now in this particular case. And then I, then I could take my, my fancy uh, uh, color board here. And we can take it and drag it down into a lower track so it'll override. Uh, hit escape here. And move my scrubber so I see all three. Here's my, uh, my color board and I can take it and I can move it. And so I've used two color boards in this particular example. Great way to modify what you're doing with color boards in CyberLink PowerDirector.